good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Marlene DeGeneva. Uh, and welcome, welcome to tonight's uh, Rezoning Perspectives. My name is Marlene DeGeneva, and I'm one of the co-chairs, along with Ishmael Afra, who is here, um, for your RPNA, the Regent Park Neighborhood Association. We're holding this community meeting tonight to discuss the rezoning proposal uh, which was brought to the city by TCH and Tridale Corporation. We have heard from many of you that there's still questions that you, you need answers for. I'd like to state that we did um, invite both TCH and Tridale yeah. uh, to join us in this conversation this evening, and we are disappointed that they've, dis they've chosen to decline. We believe that there's real value in um, resident-led forums such as this, uh, as well as the, the presentation from the builders. You need both. Um, the city is going to decide whether to support their proposal or whether to decline it. And as uh, residents in our community, we have influence over their decision. A lot of us don't know which way we're going to, what we're going to support, which way we're going to go. And we need more answers to those, to those questions. Um, what is really important is that you have all the, the information you need for or against uh, to make your own decisions one way or the other, which way, you're, who you're going to support or what you're going to support. If we don't make a really good informed decision, others will make those decisions for us. So we need to know. I'd like now to introduce uh, both Ishmael Afra uh, and Walid Kagoli Ali, who are both on our board, who will um, uh, take care of this meeting this evening. Uh, they're both on our yeah we, we both both on our PNA board, and they'll start us off with your questions, with your concerns, and with your own perspective as you see this re rezoning coming along. Um, Understand, we're not going to be able to answer all your questions this evening, but we want to have a fulsome discussion. We'll do our best uh, to find those answers from you. We'll continue to have these meetings until we get all of our questions answered. So right now, I'd like to turn this over right now to Walid. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. And thank you for coming. Thank you, Marlene. I hope you can hear me in this mic as well. Thank you, Marlene. Uh, I'm going to now share uh, our slide deck. Uh, so give me one second. Uh, for the folks online, please do let me know if you can't see the, the slide deck, and I'll make sure to reshare it. Uh, can folks see the slide deck online? Yes, I'm assuming. OK, before we get started, though, uh, with the formal part, I want to invite Adonis. I, don't, I know Adonis wanted to make some remarks. Do you want to make the remarks right now, Adonis? Sure. Thank yeah. you. Yep. Okay. Uh, I just want to let every, hi, my name's Adonis Huggins. I'm with the Focus Media Arts Center. Hello out there in Zoom land, and hello everybody here. I just want to remind everybody that uh, this uh, event is being filmed by the Regent Park TV, and Regent Park TV is your TV for the community. It provides news and meetings like this. So if you happen to miss the meeting or you want to go back to it, it will be on Regent Park TV. And Regent Park TV can be seen through YouTube, a YouTube channel. And uh, if you need information about how to connect to YouTube or how to connect to Regent Park TV, uh, there are posters here that you could have by uh, Mercedes, who is working for the SDP and uh, making communications available. So thank you very much again. And Mercedes Mer might want to say a few words about why she's here. Yes, Marshida. Uh, thank you. Oh, I'm not tall as you, Adonis. <laughs> thank you guys for this opportunity. So I am here to give out the information about uh, the RPTV and all the stakeholder STPTV information, as well as I'm also here to give information about the community well wellness hub information as well. So please do come to this table. Um, if you guys need any information, what is wellness hub, what service we provide, also about our RPTV and the stakeholder table. And we do have another meeting tomorrow for the evaluation and benchmark, um, which is happening downstairs um, in CSI living room. 
please do come and see our work at the um, what we're doing with the stakeholder table with the all the four working groups and do give us the information uh, the feedback and then we want you to involve in that um, in that meetings and then what else I'm gonna say that's it. Oh, please don't forget to download the app, the Allo Neighbor app, and all the information should be there. Um, um, please, we need you guys to download, so just support us with that, and so we can update all the information in there. So right on your home, you could get to see everything in there. Thank you. Thank you, Marshida. And Marshida is working really hard getting the word out in our community about the amazing events and opportunities, so we really see the great work you're doing, so thank you. Uh, so we're going to get uh, formally started with our meeting, um, and um, so welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to the Regent Park community-wide meeting that's going to be focused on rezoning, so the rezoning perspectives. We want to hear from you. Um, and just remember that we are all stronger together. So the Regent Park Neighborhood Association, we're going to talk about it uh, very briefly later on. Um, I'm going to quickly go to Quickly gonna go through our agenda. So uh, we're gonna do a Zoom overview, so for folks who are online, so they know how to participate. Uh, we're gonna uh, go through a land acknowledgement, uh, meeting objectives. Uh, we had a panel discussion planned for today, uh, but we've decided that we will have that panel discussion in the new year, uh, but today we're gonna have a discussion directly with each one of you, okay? Uh, so that's our plan tonight. We're gonna take questions from the audience, and then we're gonna talk about actions and next steps. So quickly for those folks on Zoom, you can unmute or mute your button uh, by clicking the unmute button. You can show your video. Uh, we're also gonna have live transcripts available for this video uh, for accessibility sake. Um, so what's the purpose of our meeting today? It's to update and engage community members on the rezoning application submitted by Tridel and Toronto Community Housing. We want you to gain important knowledge on what's happening with rezoning, what are the community benefits uh, related to the project. Uh, we also want you to join our coalition. One of the things that we hope to do is inspire you to join the Region Park Community Benefits Coalition because it's residents like you that make this work possible. Uh, and we also want to learn how to engage and support each other during this critical time for our community. Um, so I just want to remind everyone about our community agreement. This space is dedicated to creating an equitable, um, diverse, and inclusive environment for all members of this meeting. Uh, we, want to intent we, we will intentionally build accessible and welcome spaces for people of all races, genders, classes, abilities, ages, cultures, religions, and sexualities. So this is a safe space to speak. Okay, just want to remind everyone that. And uh, just note, uh, we thank Regent Park Focus uh, that this um, meeting will also be available on YouTube. Uh, okay, we'll move on to the next piece. So I'm gonna quickly do the land acknowledgement. So the, the, and I'm getting a phone call. I think there's some people waiting to come uh, from downstairs. So whoever, please go downstairs. There's a bunch of people waiting to come up to the meeting. Um, we would like to acknowledge that Toronto is built upon the traditional lands of the Mississauga, the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, the Wendats, the Chippewa, and many other indigenous peoples, and that these peoples have become the stewards of the land in Toronto and across Turtle Island for thousands of years. It's important to acknowledge the history of the lands that we are on, to stop and think about how the lands that we use today have supported and nourished other nations, other people before we came to use them, we must acknowledge that we now benefit from the land and learn how we, might, how we may continue to respect the histories and steward the land. I'd like to acknowledge that Canada is founded on white supremacy as a trade and commerce economy that continues to affect the lives and well-being of indigenous peoples, putting economic greed in front of, in front of indigenous rights. The understanding and acknowledgement of the people that came before is particularly relevant here in Regent Park as it has been home to indigenous peoples from time immemorial, but has also been home to waves of tight-knit communities for more than 100 years. Regent Park's history includes multiple efforts to tear down and rebuild, with each iteration of the neighborhood washing away the connections to the people, lives, and communities that were here before. As a richly diverse community, displacement is something that many Regent Parkers feel deeply as part of the history of the land 
and part of their own histories as newcomers, descendants of the transatlantic slave trade, and other forms of imperialism, and as community members that have called Regent Park home before and during the most recent period of revitalization. This meeting has been organized by the Regent Park Neighborhood Association, a community-led neighborhood association that respects the indigenous cultural worldview that is based in kinship, taking care of our community, the people, and the land, and sharing what we have with those around us. The process of revitalization here in Regent Park offers us an opportunity through the social development plan to honor the histories of the Mississaugas, the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, the Huron-Wendats, the Chippewa, as well as the, peop as well as the people that have called Regent Park home over the last century, and to preserve the spirit of community, neighborliness, and advocacy that has been so vibrant within our community. We can acknowledge the history of the land and are committed to stewarding it and preserving it. Okay, so that's our land acknowledgement. Um, we're, Ishmael and I are gonna be uh, facilitating this conversation today. Uh, we just heard from Marlene earlier, uh, so I hope that the words that Marlene shared were inspirational um, and empowering, and so I just wanna thank Marlene uh, for those opening remarks. Uh, I just wanna quickly uh, let you folks know there's a community benefits oversight working group, and you're gonna hear more about it later on, uh, but it is a group of residents, market and Toronto community housing residents that have uh, been you know, either selected through a panel or selected through the neighborhood association or other uh, groups to make sure that the community members are given as much information as possible to make the best decision on how $26.8 million is going to be allocated in our community. We're right now in the midst of a searching, uh, midst of a search we're trying to find a market resident to join CBOX. So look out for notices about that opportunity. So if you're a market resident, we'd love to, for you to consider joining our group. Okay, so some context. We all know Regent Park is an active and engaged community of residents. And there are many things that we've talked about in the past. We've talked about residents, uh, you know, through their work through access to recreation, through the legacy fund, through the region park revitalization, but also through something called the social development plan. And if, if you don't know about this, the region park neighborhood has the only social development plan that is funded by the city of Toronto. Okay, we receive about half a million dollars every year for up to $2.5 million to implement our goal, which is social cohesion and inclusion, okay? We have four working groups of the SDP, and if you wanna know more about the social development plan, please do ask during our Q&A. Okay, some quick things. Um, the strength of our community is reflected and nurtured by an active network of resident-led groups. Uh, so the Neighborhood Association, we've got our coalition, we've got the working groups of the social development plan that I just briefly talked about but we've also have amazing organizations in our neighborhood, like Mothers of Peace, Healing Us One, Friends of Regent Park, we've got Tenants Council, Youth Gravity, et cetera. I can keep on naming the names. I would love for you to think about how you can get involved in supporting any group, any organization, especially your neighborhood association. Um, I also wanna remind everyone that the Regent Park Neighborhood Association was formed in 2015 to create a unified voice for our community. And we have a goal. We wanna make sure that we have representation from both market and Toronto community housing. So our goal is 50-50, right? 50 TCHC and 50 market housing. We're led by a small elected group of committed and connected volunteers. You heard from Marlene. We've got Miguel here uh, in our meeting. We've got Gail, we've got Ishmael. We've got a bunch of uh, folks who volunteer that time to make our neighborhood association as effective as possible. And our mandate is focused on advocacy, meaningful community engagement, and community building. We also have a coalition that we'd love for you to get involved with. Um, and uh, I'm not gonna talk much about the coalition because I want us to sp spend a lot of time talking about the rezoning application put forward by Tridel and, uh, and TCC. But I wanna plug this in. Get involved in the coalition because that's how you will be able to understand what's going on, not just with regards to community benefit work here in Regent Park, but also across the city, okay? Um, 
I'm not going to quickly, I'm not going to spend too much talking about our accomplishments, but your neighborhood association has advocated for so much investments in our community. Not just the social development plan, but also the $26.8 million uh, in community benefits. And we've been ad advocating to make sure that residents are at the table so that decisions are not made for us without us, right? We have a very strong slogan, decisions and cannot be made for us without us. So we have to be at the table, and your neighborhood association has been doing that great work. Um, I'm going to jump through this, and because um, this is very... This is very important stuff, but I think a lot of folks have uh, some context to this. Before we get to the pros and cons, I'm just going to stop sharing, and I'm going to ask Ishmael uh, to do the next part of uh, this presentation, which is, uh, I'm not sure if you folks are aware of this, but on the 28th, which was on Monday, so two days ago, Tridel and Toronto Community Housing hosted a community-wide meeting. And at that community-wide meeting, they presented um, the revised application, uh, uh, the, re the revised rezoning application. So what happened was in April of 2022, uh, so a couple of months ago, that application was submitted to the city. The city had comments about the design, and they provided those comments back to Tridel and TCHC. Now Toronto Community Housing and Tridel shared those uh, the, shared those details with us. So I'm going to ask Ishmael, and I'm going to share the screen, and Ishmael maybe can take it from here, um, to just where we'll go through the presentation uh, that was made on Monday by Tridown TCHC briefly, so everyone is in the know, and then we'll go through those questions. Okay? Is, is, it, is that fair for everybody? Yeah? Okay, so I'm going to now share this wonderful presentation. Give me one second. Okay, for those on, online, I'm sharing the presentation, okay? okay. So, uh, thank you, Walid. Uh, so as many of you know, uh, we, we're not new to community updates. Uh, we've been having them for the past uh, 15 years. Uh, and um, throughout this process, uh, Tridel and Toronto Community Housing has done many consultations. Uh, they've done consultations with young people. They've done consultations with organizations. And also, they've done consultations with the larger community. Uh, we've also had uh, an update on November 28th, where they've shown us uh, uh, the feedback that the city had made to them. And they've shown us uh, some of the changes uh, they've received uh, based on that information. So I'm, gonna, uh, I'm just curious to know, uh, those who are here, how many of you were, were at that meeting? Just raise of hands. One, one, two, three. We see three hands here. Okay, four. Okay, so that's good. Uh, and, and then online, uh, how many of you uh, have been uh, part of those conversations? I'm just going to stop sharing okay. here. Online, how many folks? Just uh, hands up if possible. I see no one online. Nope, no one online. Okay. Uh, so luckily, uh, what do you call the information, uh, what do you call the changes that the city had recommended was, was not too drastic. It was basically changes around uh, how the streets look like, uh, from private streets to streets that are more public. Uh, so those were some of the changes that uh, the city recommended to them. Also, uh, the numbers uh, of uh, units, both Toronto Community Housing and market units had been changed. So uh, some of them have been, uh, so for instance, the first number went from, uh, for at least TCHC, it used to be uh, 1,181 units, Toronto Community Housing. Uh, and then the market units was uh, 1,792. Uh, but the changes uh, that were made uh, added uh, units to both sides. So currently, you have uh, 1,194 Toronto Community Housing Units to 1,876 units. Uh, the important piece uh, in, in terms of this is that the 60, 40 percent uh, market to TCHC is kept. So the number hasn't increased drastically uh, to worry about that. Also, uh, I know that community members uh, have shown concern 
around the heights of the buildings. Uh, so one of the uh, changes to this has been that uh, uh, the previous one, they were about, the highest building was about 38, uh, but currently the highest one stands at 39. Uh, so that's uh, 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 one floor higher than previously. Uh, there are reasons as to why these changes have been made, uh, and some of the comments we've heard at the meeting is because to accommodate for the uh, density that's happening, uh, what do you call, with a larger green space, uh, a lot, uh, what do you call, uh, a plaza in the middle of the uh, uh, four and five, also uh, uh, affordable housing. Uh, these were some of the rationales Toronto Community Housing gave as to why uh, the increase in heights were happening. But this has always been a concern of community members, uh, uh, the length of the towers. Uh, what else? Uh, there was questions around, uh, there was a promise by the city to do a consultation with the new councillor, yeah. uh, because at the time when they did the first uh, consultation, we were going through an election process. So it, they felt that uh, we needed uh, the councillor present in order to do a consultation. Previously, city staff did confirm with us that they would do uh, a consultation with the new councillor uh, with us. Yeah. Uh, but we did not hear that information at the last November 28 update. Uh, but we will confirm with the city uh, if that is to happen as well. Uh, also, our councillor, Chris Moyes, was there last night uh, giving uh, his first introduction to the community. And we want to congratulate him for uh, winning the election. And we hope to work with him uh, strongly to advocate for, uh, for this resident. So one of the things I want to talk about, uh, th those were some of the updates, but also one thing we shared at the community is the importance of uh, resident leadership in these conversations. Uh, sometimes uh, there's a risk towards working with residents because we are not structured, we're not, we might be disorganized, and sometimes there might be uncomfortability working with residents but it is important to put this at the heart of residents. So it's quite disappointing to hear that when we've made invitations to both Tridel and TCHC to join us in this conversation, both had declined. Uh, they had declined for reasons, uh, however, uh, uh, that still uh, is disappointing to hear. But I'm happy to see uh, Daniel's uh, uh, Fatima here with us, uh, what do you call, uh, who joined us for tonight, so thank you for coming uh, in, in this conversation. Uh, but I do hope, yeah, but I do hope, but I do hope going forward that when residents make an invitation, especially a resident association makes an invitation, to the developer yeah. that they do recognize the importance to, uh, in, to come in, even at the risk of being uncomfortable. Uh, I, I hope that we can send that message uh, to them. Tonight, it's, it's all about you. Uh, it's all about everybody who's online, everybody who's here. We want to hear from you. In you've, you've had lots of information thrown at you. You've been to the many consultations and many informations throughout the year. We want to hear from you in terms of what's at the top of your mind, what are some of the concerns you still have. Uh, you've seen some of the uh, drawings. Uh, you've heard about the community amenities. You've heard about the library. You, you've heard about many things. So we want to ask you, what are your thoughts? Uh, what are your concerns? What are your questions? And hopefully, uh, a conversation among uh, uh, Regent Parkers, both those who live here, who play here, and who work here. Uh, the floor is open to you, and we want to discuss with you uh, those things. Excellent. Excellent uh, presentation, Ishmael. So uh, for anyone who's interested in this presentation, if you could email us at rpna.info at gmail.com. Uh, we don't mind sharing this uh, most recent update from Tridel and TCH with you uh, so that you could share it with your neighbors. Uh, and I just want to not just reiterate what Ishmael said about the importance of the project proponents or the developer and Toronto Community Housing being at the table with residents, especially when, they, when, we, when they're invited by the Neighborhood Association. It is critical that everyone's at the table. The reason why our community is not getting what it deserves, what it needs, is because people are not at the table. Right? And we need to make sure that not just 
other levels of government are at the table to fund this project, but Tridel and Toronto Community Housing are at the table with residents and other stakeholders to make sure that we get this right. Um, so I'm going to share some questions. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to have a discussion, everyone. Okay? You're all panelists in my eyes. You, every opinion you say matters. Yeah. And we're going to be documenting everything you say. And the reason why is because we want to reflect on your thoughts uh, during this holiday break. Because in January of 2023, I promise you this. We're going to have a bigger meeting than this with a lot more people. Hopefully, we'll have our friends from the media cover it as well so that we can tell our story uh, publicly about what our needs are for phases four and five. Okay? So I'm just going to stop sharing this presentation. Uh, give me one second. And I'm going to share the uh, slide deck here with our questions. Uh, this is a critical uh, step in our community, so I, want, I would like for folks to uh, just be aware of the following things. Um, Ishmael referenced a City of Toronto consultation that's happening in the winter of 2023. Please pay attention to that meeting. That meeting is going to be vital, right? That is when residents will have an opportunity, and you can do so in writing, or you can do it virtually. Uh, hopefully, it's going to be in person, but your input matters because uh, uh, there is a, there's a, within city council, there's going to be a group of councillors that are going to make a decision based on the staff report that's going to be put together uh, based on your feedback, based on your input. Okay, so I want everyone to uh, know that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to get started with our questions. And before we get into our questions, I'm going to put this behind the screen real quickly. This is what we talked about at our last, last year, a year ago when we were talking about rezoning, right? And we were hoping to have a discussion today so we could get people to share their views but also get information, okay? So what I'm doing now is I'm gonna quickly ask, and we could introduce Ishmael. Doesn't he look handsome <laughs> over there? <laughs> My plan was to introduce Ishmael. Um, he's, he's got a very well-written bio, by the way. Okay, so what we wanna ask is we wanna ask each one of you Please share your perspectives on rezoning, covering impact, both positive and negative. Who would like to start off? And if you'd like to speak, we have a wonderful mic right there, right, right here on my right. You can go up to the mic and you can share your perspective. So we'd like to go first. Don't be shy, because if you're shy, I'm going to put Ishmael on the spot. So maybe people online too? Okay, Stephanie, I hope you can hear us. Go ahead, Stephanie. My, my big concern is that they are fundamentally changing the character of the development of the final two phases. And they've even gone ahead and they further increased the density of the tower heights since their first application, which just goes to show that, you know, they think they can, they can do whatever they want. And we haven't really had much of a community conversation that's led by the community yet. So, you know, my big concern is the, the huge delays that this is going to cause, uh, the fact that they're putting in a wall of towers on Little Oak Street, um, which is, you know, way beyond what's allowed by the secondary plan, which kind of describes the, the character of the neighborhood, way beyond what's allowed by the uh, guidelines in the City of Toronto for tall buildings. They're going to be putting the tallest buildings on oak. There's going to be a wall of towers just to the north of our, of our, uh, of our main central park. And so from my perspective, there are a ton of issues um, around this. And I think we really need to have conversations with the counselor um, among ourselves, you know, to talk about the delays and what they mean for people who are living in the TCHC housing right now, um, and what they mean for people who are living on the edge of the development, what it means for the length of the construction because it's now going to be years before it starts and it's going to be many many years added on as they add so many new towers and so much height and so many new units to the last uh, phases of the development um, and i think it has implications for social services and for schools just the density that they're planning here 
we're going to become one of the most highly dense neighborhoods in the city, even relative to um, St. Jamestown, which is the most densely populated neighborhood in the country. So they're really planning to make fundamental changes to the character of the neighborhood. And from my perspective, we haven't really started to discuss that yet. So I'm really thankful that the PNA is leading these uh, community-led discussions. I think they're extremely important. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you for those uh, wonderful remarks. Um, who would like to go next? about the density of the community right now, like in the park summertime, is packed. So many families come up and Regent Park is not able to hold up to that amount of family kids coming out and it's, it's really ridiculous that they wanna add more people. I hope they have plans for another park where families can also go there um, the other thing is about <laughs> affordable rent and also about like, we, I live in Mitchell Housing and I wanted to own my own space but then because of my religion I can't buy it. So affordable rent, it's always, we always wanted families in Regent Park to be prioritized. I always speak to Ismail about it and he's like, oh, that passed, that chain passed. So I think it's never too late to add more affordable rent where families can uh, put their other extended families into affordable or people who wants to rent. Um, another thing, I just want to say thank you to Daniels. I always like love Daniels. They <laughs> took us out of the poverty in Regent Park. So thanks so much for being here. And try dolls. I don't know, I haven't met you guys. I don't know what's going on. You guys already want to add buildings and you don't want to come to our meetings? I want to know why. Well said. Um, luckily, uh, in the last updates, they did mention uh, affordable uh, uh, rental. rental units. So, uh, and they're working with the city of Toronto uh, to make sure that the, the city is able to uh, put the funding required. So I believe uh, the, the number I heard was 500, uh, but don't quote me. About 600 that. something. 600, yeah. yeah. So there will be affordable units uh, added into uh, the development as well. Is there any way we can ask as a community member to put that on priority, people who already live in Digital Park? Yeah. Because people are living on top of each other, and if they're providing affordable rent, we should be prioritized to Digital Park. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, anyone else uh, has uh, ideas, thoughts, uh, please, uh, both online and those who are here. Uh, for those who are online, uh, please raise your hand so that we can queue up for you to speak. Uh, but go ahead. Okay, hi, good evening, everybody. I think some people see me in Regent Park sometimes. I sit with my son. I'm new to the area. I've lived here almost like four years, and I'm on affordable rent. And the thing that I face is parking. Parking? Yes. We pay more than the GHC or the ones who are on subsidized, but we never get parking, and it's a hustle. Especially for me as a mother, I will have to stay hours looking for parking, especially in the cold, in the snow. I have to shovel my car as a woman in the freezing cold. So when you tell them I'm paying more, they tell you there is no accessibility for parking. And you look, the building has parking space. And like that's my concern, especially in the winter and the cold. Like some of us will have to look two hours rotating, wasting gas, there's inflation going on. That's my concern. Did you, did you contact me about parking? No. No, it wasn't you, it was someone else. But uh, I th you're not the only one. There's so many people 
who have vulnerable situations living in our community, whether it's safety concerns, whether it's accessibility needs, and they, they so thank you for raising that point. Thank you, thank you everybody. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Excellent. Hi everyone, thank you. So uh, I'm the immigrant. So I want to say something, I want to speak something for our single mom family. Uh, so our single mom family, they, um, these moms are all very hardworking. They raise the next generation. But my experience is I'm very lucky. I get affordable housing from a program. Um, I, I, I'm, the, I'm, I'm the graduate of the Homeward Bound. Um, so I, um, I just reach all the milestones, so that's why I can live in a very beautiful housing. But think about all those single moms, they don't have the opportunity like me, they're very struggling. When, when I was trying to find a unit in this market, so we were, we were discriminated. So we are not a triple A client. We are, not, we are not like a single, we have high income. We don't have high income, it's not because we are lazy, it's because we put a lot of time, we just put a lot of effort to raising our children. And then when it comes to the market rent, we are single mom, including me, are discriminated. We have to offer this, 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 this. And when we are not just competitive with the other, so-called triple A student, uh, not triple A students, I'm sorry, triple A clients, so we are priced out of the rental market. So I really just uh, want to advocate, although I already get beaut beautiful housing, I see the seriousness of this problem. I want to speak for this group of people. Please help this, because single mom are raising the children, the children are our gen next generation. What we do as adults and we let the children see. The children are witnessing, witnessing what we adults are doing for the next generation. Uh, I know Canada is not perfect, but Canada is very good. So we hope that um, we can do more. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. Um, the, you know what? Um, mothers, single mothers, they're the backbone of our community. We need to do everything we can uh, to support uh, the creation of opportunities for women in our community. And women leadership is so important. Um, so I just want to uh, ask, you, ask you all the following questions, because I've realized some folks might not have an opinion yet. Maybe you're still wondering, am I in support of the rezoning application? Am I against the rezoning application? Is there things that I would like to see included in this submission? So we want to get you thinking about this stuff. So I'm gonna ask the following question, and I'd love for you to come up and, and say this. What, in your opinion, are the potential costs of rezoning? So in your opinion, what are the potential costs? So I heard from Stephanie earlier, she talked about delays. She talked about families that have been waiting to be housed now having to wait more, more to spend more time waiting. What are the other costs that we need to think about? But we also want to think about what are the benefits of rezoning, okay? So I'm going to first of all ask you about the costs, and then let's talk also about the benefits. Who'd like to go up? I have, I have someone here. On the mic, okay. Someone in the, would like to speak, Sarah Jane? Uh, go ahead, Sarah Jane. I'm absolutely appalled about the height of these buildings and the density of these buildings, and it's going to change the whole character of Regent Park. The entire character of Regent Park. Think about what was, what was created for them. And the community had its own swimming pool. You want to cut off from that. I mean, this is just outrageous. And I'm just wondering what we can do about it. I mean, I don't see a benefit to high-rise housing when we don't have the infrastructure either here in this community. And um, it'll block out like, where it is all along. Oh, it'll block out everything from the, from the south down, uh, seeing it from our buildings. Um, I don't see the benefit. I'm, I'm, I don't know what the developers have said is a fair benefit besides money. Um, I'm dead set against it. And I, if we're dead set against it, we should develop a way to protest. Thank you, Sarah Jane. 
Okay, thank you, Sergeant Chen. Uh, will someone like to talk about the cost? Just share your thoughts. We're having a discussion here. No judgment. Who'd like to speak? In your opinion, what do you think are the costs or the benefits that will come with the rezoning? Don't be shy. I know there's some very brilliant thoughts in, in people's minds right now. I see you hold, you see people's body language. <laughs> that this and their thoughts are popping in their head. Who's willing to share some of those thoughts with us? Who wants to be generous? Okay, Marlene, you want to you want to go ahead? I'm not on this topic. Okay. okay. Something that I'm personally not clear about that I'd I'd like an answer. Um, that it, again, it's not this topic. Um, but there's a lot of talk about being able to provide uh, affordable housing. I don't know what that means. Affordable housing, as opposed to what? Excellent question. Like right now we have rent geared to income, which seems to me a very good thing. But affordable housing, what's, what's the difference between affordable housing and um, uh, market housing? Well said. Well, good question. Answer that? Go ahead. Will let Ishmael answer that? Yeah. No, I was asking if you want oh, to. Oh, I'll answer it. Okay. <laughs> so very simple um, answer to you, Marnine. The, the position of Toronto Community Housing as of the 28th is that affordable housing means 80% of market rent. Now, I want to remind everyone, the city of Toronto passed something called the uh, Inclusionary Zoning Bylaws. And in the bylaws, they defined affordable housing not as a percentage of market rent, but based on your income. So the inclusionary zoning bylaw limited landlord or limited anyone to charge anyone beyond 30%. So you're not allowed to charge more than 30% of someone's income for rent. Okay. And this bylaw that was approved and supported by residents of Toronto. So every neighborhood, Parkdale, Regent Park, Every, Alexander Park, every neighborhood, all the residents wanted this to happen. We had a bunch of greedy developers appeal the definition of affordable housing at something called the Ontario Land Tribunal. And your neighborhood association actually is fighting that good fight. Right? They're fighting for you. They're fighting for the residents of Regent Park to make sure that developers respect the democratic will of residents who've determined that you it's unacceptable to charge people more than 30% of their income to pay for rent, for basic human right, which is housing. Now, the federal government might have a different definition of affordable housing, right? So that's what we're worried about as well, is if we don't have all three levels of government sit at the same table and agree to funding opportunities for housing, whether it's rent to own, whether it's affordable rental, whether it's rent geared to income, we all lose, right? Because if developers get their way and they start defining what affordable housing means, we will, we will be living in a city as expensive as New York, if not more, right? Because you, it depends on demand and supply, right? So that's a very important question. Thank you, Marlene. And if you have any questions about that, please ask. Go ahead. Yeah, so, so the good thing, uh, since people are having a hard time finding what's good about rezoning, uh, the good thing, and, and this depends on you, is uh, there will be more affordable housing yeah. incorporated into these phases. Yeah. Uh, many community members in phases one and two and three, uh, there was affordable units, and many community members benefited from that. Uh, so there'll be more affordable units in, in this time around as well. Uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, also, we did ask this question yeah. on the 28th. We asked them uh, why why go through rezoning? Like, what, what, what is the upside to it? 
uh, how could you justify the, the, the high towers? And the answers we got was that previously, uh, there was, uh, when they thought about phases one and two and three, they thought about just replacing the units. Mm -hmm. They were not thinking about adding affordable housing to it. They were not thinking about adding community spaces to it. They were not thinking about adding uh, a larger, uh, what do you call, what's called the plaza area. Even though the library, uh, there's funding for the library, the space that the library will occupy, it will, it will be three floors, that space, uh, that it's going to occupy, it needs to also be taken and to support uh, the market units that will help build the other sides as well. So those are some of the explanations they gave. More community spaces, more affordable units, more uh, greener spaces. These are the reasons why they have to uh, increase the heights in order to uh, pay for these things. Now some people may choose not to believe in the city or TCHC. Uh, but, but that's the rationale that they've given. Excellent. Anyone? Go ahead. Yeah. The affordable housing people and the affordable housing. Is there an increase on the percentage that like every year they do? Is, is, the question the is, question. is there an increase in affordable housing uh, related to rezoning? Excellent question. And I'll answer it very simply as yes. They are proposing more rental, uh, affordable rental opportunity, uh, opportunities in, uh, due to rezoning. Uh, but what we also want to do is we want to make sure that we are very clear on what is approved and what is new, right? So no one's asked this question. So if we were to not uh, support as a community, if we did not support the rezoning application, what are we going to get, OK? Does anyone have an answer to that? I'm going to actually do a pop quiz. I, I wish I brought some raffle tickets, raffle prizes to give away. Uh, it'd been fun. Um, true or false? How about we do this? True or false? If the rezoning application is rejected, if the rezoning application is rejected, is it true or false? Will there be a new library in Regent Park, phases four and five? Huh? Who's got an answer? Come on, come to the mic and tell us your answer. Come on. True or false? The question is, if the rezoning application was to not be approved, so it's not approved, will there be a new library in phases four and five? The answer is what? Is that? No. The answer is saying no. Who else says no? No. No? OK. Who else saying no? I hear three no's. I see a hand there. That's another third no. Anyone else? Yes. You say yes, Marlene. Absolutely. Marlene, why do you say yes? Why don't you, why don't you tell us? The city has already paid for it. And the city paid for it quite a long time ago. The community wants it. TCHC did not want it. But the, but the community did, and the city agreed years ago to pay for it. The, the, even the chief librarian in this city put off renovating the library on Parliament Street specifically so that they could take that money and bring it to Regent Park. And TCHC knows that. Excellent. Okay, so that's your that's your response. We got Richard. How about how about the space? They say so. One of the arguments they heard was that yes, the library, uh, the money for the library has already been secured. Yep. But the space that the library would occupy, so the library is three floors. Yep. So it's going to occupy a huge space facing Gerard. So that space, it takes. It's not about just the money right. to build it, but also the, the space, space that yeah. it took. I think in if order. They did not build that into their plan, yeah. knowing that the money was there, would be true. absolutely egregious. Yeah. Would be egregious, Door. knowing that the community wants it. Got it. Uh, so we have uh, uh, a comment for, uh, online, coming from online. Uh, yeah, so we have someone online who'd like to comment. Uh, uh, please go ahead, uh, Richard. Uh, uh, introduce yourself, and then if you're able to comment. 
Hi, how's everyone? How are you doing? I'm intrigued about that to of the town. My understanding of, uh, of what I've heard of affordable housing. So there's ECFCs, affordable housing, and then there's affordable housing, which is separate. So my understanding of affordable housing is that it is the average price of a rental across the city. So that would be all the way from Scarborough to Etobicoke, south to downtown, and it would be the average price of that that is affordable housing. Um, and that was said to me by not a developer in this community, but a community that that is what affordable housing is. And, and I know that's it's up in the air and it fluctuates all the time, as, as uh, uh, we'll leave a room to. But my understanding of, of affordable housing is the average price for a two bedroom across the city, a rental across the city. Yes, thank you for that definition, Richard. Uh, uh, no. So, so uh, Marlene co commented that, that might not be a ver uh, affordable, affordable at all. But, but, that, but, 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 but he was giving us the definition of what's standard right now, which is. That's merely the average price. Yeah, we, yeah. yeah which is, as, as Richard said, they look at across the city, what is the average market cost, and 80% uh, of that they consider affordable. Oh, uh, got yeah. Got yeah. 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 Uh, so, so yes, uh, there was an interesting conversation happening uh, with between, About the me, between me and Marlene. Yeah. And I think this is a good question to ask uh, both Toronto Community Housing and Tridel. Uh, what is it that's really pushing the heights? Is it, as I, is it, as I've explained, which is those heights, those are market units and TCHC units. Those mark, additional market units pay for uh, the extra amenities, community spaces you'll get, the extra affordable units you'll get, and that if they didn't add those on, you would lose mm -hmm. those amenities, you would lose the space for the library. The question we want to ask is, is that the case? Is yeah. that a fact or is that not a fact? If it is a fact, then it's for the community to ask themselves, do we want a community that has amenity spaces, community spaces, affordable units, but with a height, with a, with a tower that are higher than average communities? Or do we want lower heights and less of those other benefits? So it's a cost benefit analysis at the end. Yeah. Uh, uh, those are my comments. So I have someone here, but if you want to take. Yeah. Uh, so just uh, we've got someone else um, on the speakers list online that wants to speak. So I'm going to make this very brief. Um, I, I want everyone to write this down, if you can, on your phone, on a piece of paper. Write down this very important information, okay? So a lot of people are wondering, uh, rezoning? What's rezo has the rezoning happened before? Rezoning has actually happened in 2014. So I want you to look something up called the secondary plan. Regent Park Secondary Plan. Google it. Google that. That's going to be a homework between now and next year when we have our meeting in January. Because I asked a very, very important question, which is, if the rezoning application was not approved, will we have a library in our community? Yes or no? So next year, when I ask this question, I want everyone here to have the same answer, okay? Joanne, you wanted to say something? Sure, let's backtrack, yeah. Uh, so the Zoom people would like to hear you, could you? Yeah, come here. Hi, and good evening. Um, can we just backtrack a little bit for the people who are not in the room or the people who are in the room? First, can you define what rezoning is? And then secondly, with affordable market rent, can you give a practical example? Like I know 20 years ago when I was living in TCHC, a three-bedroom market rent went for $1,120. That was a three-bedroom market rent. So if you can give a, if you know, if you're able to give an example of a one-bedroom market affordable Exactly. Well, like, just to clarify. I'm, I'm just really confused about that whole thing right now. I, I've been out of the game or the TCHC game for quite a while now. And then um, secondly, the woman that shared about the homebound, is she still here? Oh, there you are. I would like to actually know how you actually got into that program. And, um, and yeah, so that's, yeah. 
Yeah, I think you want to know some more information about the resources of a single mom. Yeah, so because I got a referral from... Oh, yeah, so about the Homeward Bound program, it's a very good program for the single mom uh, who help us um, if we are eligible, then can help us to um, plan for the uh, education, go back to school, and also the internship, and the final employment, and also help us transition into beautiful housing. It's a lot of, a lot of work, uh, very hard work, but it's very great. It is in the East York. You can Google online. It belongs to the Wood Green. Homeward Abound program. I think it's a partnership with the Daniels Corporation, I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Joanne, can you come here so that they can hear you? No, no, they want to hear you. We got, we got people online who want to hear what you're saying. No, 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 they, 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 they're telling me in the chat we need to hear. We want to hear Joanne. Um, I just want to know what were the qualifications for you to qualify for that program because there's a lot of single mothers in Regent yeah. Park yeah. who are in similar situations as you and I think would like to know yeah. what was so, the criteria. So like uh, um, for my personal experience is because uh, I, got, I got a good education back in my home country but in a new country finding a job is very difficult and the education is not easy to um, transcript, I, I don't know, yeah, here, here, right? Be because we are not in the same educational system, so we have to start all over again while we are raising two children. Um, two, um, for, for me, it is two children. So the eligibility is like um, you are not financially independent temporarily, and you have children uh, who is, uh, I believe, less than um, uh, 16 years old, and then you have to take the test, English and mathematics. If you do not pass the test, you cannot be admitted to. They will give you the test, English and uh, mathematics. Yeah, um, a lot of single mom even stay here longer than me. They just uh, struggling many years. They had to work here many years. They're still living in the basement because it is too high. The rent is too high. So no matter um, what's the definition of affordable, please make this group of people mm -hmm. move into the really affordable housing with their next generation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so sir. much. Thank you for saying that. We have someone else online that wants to speak. So Chelsea, Chelsea, we... we question on rezoning. Yeah. Yes, 100%. Affordable housing option, yeah. hundred percent. Okay, so I just want to acknowledge that Chelsea's online, but I'm going to answer that question. Chelsea, we haven't forgotten about you. So, rezoning. Rezoning is, yeah. Exactly, exactly, well said. So, um, I'm going to, again, start with the definition of rezoning, but I'll also try to provide context as to what processes have, has our community gone through, okay? So rezoning is a very uh, interesting process by which a developer can put forward an application to the city or to the authority. So, you know, you can put in a rezoning application to the federal government if it's on federal land. If you can do it to the provincial government, you know, if it's provincial land. And if it's on municipal lands, you apply to the city um, and you apply to reuse the land. So when you rezone, you're saying that I want to move this land from just being for this use, I want to change its use to be able to build, to be able to do more. And what rezoning does is it unpacks the value of a land. Do you understand what I mean by that? So land could be worth $1 million, right? But because you rezoned it, and now you can build a high-rise tower on it, it's now worth $60 million or $80 million, right? Because of the value of the land increased because of the rezoning. So when you, actually a lot of developers put in the paperwork to rezone, 
unlock the value of the land, and they could sell off the land to another developer to build. Right? I don't know if you folks know that. But rezoning, and how do I best put this? Unpacks the value of the land. And we are sitting on some very valuable property. Phases four and five in the downtown east is worth a lot, especially when you rezone. When you put in a subdivision to uh, rezoning and, and now the, the, the use of the land has now been increased, you can now do more with the land, now you can build higher towers or you can do other things with the land, you're now sitting on a lot of value on that piece of property. And what we've done is we've actually asked this question to Tridel and TCHC. We said, we want to understand this idea of community benefits for rezoning, okay? Because in phases one, two, three, what basically happened was when Daniels was uh, asked to resubmit their application alongside other developers through a request for proposals, an RFP, right? I just want to make sure everyone's here, paying attention, okay, good. When, th when that basically happened, Tridel won the uh, contract, won the right to develop phases four and five by when they put in their best offer for something called community benefit. So they put in $26.8 million, and because of that $26.8 million, they were awarded a contract. Now here's what's really disturbing. On Monday, we asked, well, we want to know what are the community benefit dollars for rezoning for phases four and five? The response they gave us was that it's not gonna be monetary. It's not gonna be money. It's gonna be spaces, it's going to be the creation of parks. That is your community benefits, my friends. Okay, so that was what was announced on Monday um, as their response to the community benefits question. Now the other thing I want everyone to remember is we are also going through a very interesting process in, in, in the governance of our city. In the past, what used to happen is our city councilor could go negotiate with developers a lot of community benefit money through something called Section 37. So Section 37 allowed the, the, the councilor to sit down with the developer and say, hey, my community needs more homeowners, my community needs this, we need this, and then they were able to negotiate. Doug Ford passed a law that, and, and passed regulations that, that made, it, made that the past. The new regime that they're trying to introduce, which is the new system they're trying to introduce for community benefits, is 4% of the land value. So we got confirmation on Monday from Tridel, although TCHC wanted us to go through the negotiations of Section 37. Tridel made it very clear that they expect to only pay 4% of the land value. That's it. That's the community benefit contribution. Now, people might wonder, what is 4% of the land value? We don't know. And the only person who can give us that answer is the real estate professionals working for the city of Toronto. So they have a real estate department. So, so can, I, can I jump in? Go ahead. So, so there's a good reason why they don't want to tell you. Uh, the good reason is because, uh, think of it, uh, do we want the city of Toronto to do better? Right, because we're, we're, we're Torontonians, right? And if you're selling your house, do you want to tell the competitor what the actual price is, or do you want to negotiate? So the city of Toronto is doing its due diligence by not telling what, what the actual land value is because they can negotiate for a better price. So, yeah. so and, and also, many people might not like the fact that the 4% is not monetary, but what they did tell us is that that 4% will be used to, uh, to pay for the, uh, what do you call, uh, the, the plaza, the green spaces, and typically, Section 37 dollars is used for uh, what they call found infrastructure money. That's what typically it's used for to pay for the pipes, to pay for the greenery. And what they to what they told us is that this money will be used for that. So sometimes uh, uh, you're thinking, oh, we're not getting money, but you're getting infrastructure that's community open. I know I know a person spoke about. I know a person spoke about. Uh, 
Are we good? I know a person spoke about more greenery. So this money will pay for, that, for those greenery. So sometimes you're thinking we're losing something when in fact you're gaining something from the other side. Uh, I know yeah. Chelsea wanted to say something. Why don't we take uh, Chelsea's question, but I want to make sure we, I'm going to answer your question, I promise you. Affordable, how, those two are in the back of my mind. Chelsea, do you want to go f first and then um, I'll also comment on that 4% afterwards. Chelsea, okay. go ahead. Chelsea, you're, you're good to go. Okay, uh, perfect. Because my question is actually related to uh, the community benefit. Um, I think one of you raised a very interesting question of how they're, they could be using um, the additional community benefits as uh, sort of a reason why they want to increase the height of the towers. But if the 4% land value is a given that's already built into their budget, they're going to you know, use, use that to calculate the costs um, budget then you know I, I don't see how they can turn around now and say well because we are building these community benefits uh, we, we want you know additional revenue to be generated from the, the market condos that we're building therefore we want more units and uh, higher towers um, so, so I just wonder, you know, I understand that we can't find out what exactly is that 4% of land value. Uh, for the reasons that you guys just mentioned. But I wonder if it's possible to get some sort of numbers here so that we can at least do the math and compare. You're claiming that by giving additional affordable housing and by providing additional infrastructure, it's adding costs uh, to, to, to your projects. projects. Um, but then, but then, you know, then we, we, need to, we need to see that. We need to understand, you know, how, how that's being justified. Otherwise, I just, I just find it like, Good point. As, and like this, you know, this level of, you know, sort of just, the lip service, I, I just, I, I find it hard to, to believe and, and to you know, align with them on that. Yeah, I think that's well, a, that's a, a brilliant uh, uh, question, and, and that's why the work of the neighborhood association, like that's the work of residents. We have civil servants. We have uh, they, they're paying attention to their own work. They're thinking on behalf of the city of Toronto overall. Uh, but as a resident association, we have to think about does the overall benefit to the city uh, go along with the neighborhood as well. That's why as a neighborhood association, we have a coalition. In yeah. that coalition, we have expertise from Toronto Community Benefits, other organizations, and this is part of the work that we're doing. We're having conversations with the developer and Toronto Community Housing to see that w those assumptions, are they correct? Is the 4%, uh, uh, what do you call, that they're offering uh, uh, negate the cost of the towers and the cost of, uh, the, does it offset other costs? So that's the work that we're doing. And I, and I think uh, brilliant questions like yourself uh, that you've asked, these are things that we need to answer and that we need to keep an eye on. And we'll be working closely with our counselor, mm -hmm. uh, what do you call, to make sure that whatever 4% is negotiated, is it goes to what it says it, it goes to. Uh, and, and I think you're right. Uh, and that's why we have to look into it and, and, and keep an eye. Because uh, uh, also Tridel did offer uh, monetary community benefits as well uh, because they're seeking rezoning and there's additional uh, uh, height and additional density that's why they're paying four percent and the four percent uh, is going towards community amenities as well yeah so uh, just before I answer those questions uh, I didn't forget um, Gail did you want to say something because I saw a hand up okay so because I saw Gail's point it was an earlier so before we answer your questions just one second I just want to make sure that we all understand this point. The 4% land value is not a debate or discussion. It's now law. They, they passed a law and have asked every city to change their regime, the community benefits regime, where they pay 4% of the land value. Now, I want to correct one thing. The city can negotiate that. It's, it's the way Brian from Tridel explained it on Monday, is that that amount is given. It's not negotiable. Now, I, I did read the law. I like to do my homework. And what it says is if the developer, now, if the developer thinks the city's valuation of the land is so high, you know what they can do? They can get their own independent assessment. And when they get that independent assessment and they submit it and the independent assessment is lower, guess what? That's it. So if there's no negotiations. This 
law, and this actually empowers developers to get, uh, to, to basically not be held account. There's no negotiations to pay as minimal as possible, to pay as little as possible as they can get away with. So this is not in the best interest of the residents of Toronto. Now going back to your questions about affordable housing, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I am just really, yeah. I am just really, really confused because this land has been here a long time. We, we've been in this revitalization lo a long time. We have Daniels here. What was promised when this revitalization started? Was the library um, already promised? We, some of us know how much the land is valued at, or maybe it's valued at more now, but what was promised in the past... Here. Sorry? Okay, uh, hold on. Uh, apologies, uh, uh, Sarah Jane. Uh, uh, give us one second. I haven't heard most of me. Uh, leave computer. Is it working? No, it's working. That one's not working. It's yeah, it's good. Go ahead, yeah. Okay, so we're, we have a book, and we're talking, uh, we have chapters 1 to chapters 30, and it's like we're talking, we're starting at chapter 15. Daniels was the developer for phases 1, 2, and 3. What was, the, what was promised during that time? Because the land is still there. Uh, we were promised a lot of things way before this revitalization, actually be before they dug, the sh put the shovel in the ground. Mm -hmm. So... We need to know what we were promised in the past, and I personally, I, I'm not in favor of this rezoning. Um, I just see the, the, the cost, more crime, more overcrowding, naughty, people are going to be sent to schools all across the city. It's just going to be a nightmare. Like, the city of Toronto cannot, sorry, Regent Park cannot solve our housing crisis. There's a lot of land. Pickering, there's a lot of land and no pigeons out there um, <laughs> pooping all over the place. So please talk about the history of what we were promised. And uh, with that library at Parliament Street and the new one coming, is that library at Parliament Street going to be null and like, gone? It's going to be gone. Yeah. And that's a problem. We need, to, we need all the libraries we can get here if we're going to be bringing... It doesn't matter. We're bringing, if we're going to rezone and build up high up in the sky... Listen to what I'm saying, <laughs> please. I'm reclaiming my time. I've been missing for quite some time. No. And I'm not going to get into the issues about RPNA here because um, it's not the time and the place. But when we build up high up into the sky, and for some of you who are religious, the Tower of Babel, we create a lot of problems. Like right now we're talking about access to space with our recreation, with, with our pool. We had a pool at Lord Dufferin. We got rid of that pool. Now we're complaining we don't have pool. We, can't, we don't have access to our pool. The less services that we have when it comes to libraries, pool, recreation, we're going to be in trouble. I don't care how high they're going to build that library where they're going to build because you know what's going to happen? The people who are living here is not even going to have access to that library. It's the people coming out of the community. Look at the swimming pool, the Pam McConnell Aquatic Center as an example. So if we don't wisen up today, I've been here a long time. I know this jungle pretty well. I, I know that it's a jungle. It's now a concrete jungle. So let's talk about the history. We have Daniels here. Um, I don't know, Fatima may not be able to answer the question, but what were we promised before? And let's not ask questions about, uh, is, is, is Tredell going to offer us a library? We are demanding a library. Exactly. Exactly. We need a library. Yeah. Our, ch our future is at stake here. I was the child growing up with, with, before this revitalization was, was even realized. We need the libraries. We don't need these high towers going right up into the sky. The city of Toronto needs to figure out the housing crisis because they created the housing crisis back in the 90s when ministers said that we, don't, we, we hate social housing, so we're not going to build any social housing. Here we are today with a crisis that was created exactly. by the government, and they need to solve the problem. And don't ask Regent Park to solve the problem. There's lots of land out there that they can use. Say no to higher towers. Okay. Okay, Joanne, thank you for your sharing your perspective and your opinion. Okay, so um, you raised a very important question. It's like, where we need to have a foundation of where we're at 
what was approved so that we have a sense of what's going on with this rezoning application, correct? Of course, miss. We, the reason, approved, exactly. Very difficult to understand. The, the reason why I asked the question about the library was because I wanted folks to make that distinction, right? The library was approved in the 2014 rezoning process of Regent Park. This is the second time that we're rezoning. It's not the first time. It was approved in 2014. So how long was that? Almost 10 years ago, right? Now, I am going to ask every person. I remember when I told you to look um, on, on Google or search the secondary plan. And we're going to share it on the screen. I'm going to tell you exactly what's approved. And I'm answering your questions for you. I was hoping people would do their homework in January. Or, it's not a, OK. So read this wonderful document. This document sums up everything that was approved by the city of Toronto and is valid today. So if there wasn't a rezoning application, this is what they will be building, okay? So go down just a bit. Where do you want me to go? Uh, yeah, so reconnection. So this is what they're doing right now, environmental sustainability, wait one second. Structure form, this is just aesthetic stuff, building a good place, slowly, 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 don't move too fast. I want numbers, I want things that people can look at, that will make sense. Open space, this is what they wanted to create, an open space, urban design, policies, supporting healthy neighborhoods, oh, you're moving to about housing. Okay, let's talk about housing, right? This is very important. Just slowly, 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 housing. Let's go to housing, here. What does it say here, sorry. Development in Regional Park will secure full replacement of social housing units that are demolished or converted to uses other than social housing as a result of the redevelopment of lands. At least 80% of the replacement social housing will be provided either within the Regional Park secondary plan area or within, the area to, uh, within that area together with the lands known in the year 2004 as 30 Regent Street. Now, I want everyone to remember this very important advocacy win by residents of Regent Park, which is the right to return. So in phases one, two, three, while people were getting pushed off, there wasn't that legal right to return of residents that used to live in phases one, two, three. <laughs> Thanks to the advocacy of neighborhood legal services and uh, the predecessor organization of the RPNA, we were able to secure that victory. So residents who are not living in Regent Park but are, have been living here for phases one, two, three, will get the choice to be able to move into Regent Park. Now, I want to remind everyone that families were drastically impacted by this move. Most of the units that we're going to be creating in phases four and five, there's a lot of family housing. Three to four bedroom houses, and now there's a push for five bedroom homes as well, okay? So, now, let's go to that rezoning piece, if we can. Okay, so wait, 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 wait. We have replacement rent gear to income. Uh, it says at least 65% of the replacement rent gear to income subsidies will be provided solely within the secondary plant area or within that area together with the lands. Go down. There's gear, replacement gear to income subsidies. Now, here's what's scary, and I want everyone to know this. What's approved is 25 years from 2014. Do you see this? this? This is gonna expire. If we don't lobby city council to put pl in place those clauses to extend the time by which we have access to rent gear to income, then those subsidies are gone, right? So that's very important. Like it, the devil's in the details, right? So 2014 is when it was approved. So they had 20, 25 years until uh, 2014 plus 25 years. Yeah, yeah you, you can get it. We can extend that. So that's some other pieces. Go ahead down here. Yeah. Yeah, right to return. You see the right to return? Right there. It's a, right there. Right to return to replacements right there. 
Okay, that's what's approved. That's what's in 2014. Okay, in the rezoning. Go ahead. Uh, social housing. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit confused. Uh, yeah. it's, it's, are you suggesting that uh, all these rights that, are, that have been secured here are no longer there? No, they will be there, but we need to make sure that the timelines are extended yeah. so they're not, like we don't loop. How do I best put this? If you're going to be creating units 10, 15 years from now, they're going to be open in 10 or 15 years, the time period needs to start then. Yeah. Right? I feel like, I feel like the, the impression you're creating is that we, we've had these things secured, and right now they're in jeopardy, uh, which isn't the case. So, so, so I'm a bit, I'm a bit uh, thrown off by... I don't think it's in jeopardy, yeah. but yeah. we do need to update. We need yeah. to update the terms by which we get access okay. to affordable housing and all those pieces. If you go down, no, this is the definition yeah. of the, as they use it in the secondary plan, so you can go down there. Replacement and get to income with a, uh, affordable ownership housing. Who remembers rent to own? Rent to own existed since 2014. Do you folks know that? It's just that we didn't have enough units. Right, because home values went up from 300,000 in 2011 to one point, almost a million dollars, five to six years down the road, right? So this was a concept in our secondary plan, by the way. Now, I don't wanna get into so many details in the secondary plan, because we only have another 20 minutes for our meeting, and I wanna make sure that we have a discussion. But what I want you to remember is the library, the library was approved in the secondary plan, the community space, is, 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 is that, is that the library? case? Yeah. Uh, the library was approved in the secondary plan. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, w I wouldn't think so. I think, I think the library is, uh, is part of the reason why they need to rezone. So if the library... No, no, no. I'm, t I'm talking about... Uh, no, can, can I, can I, can I? So, sorry, sorry, one second. Could, 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 one could, by one. Could, and like, I want to make sure you like go if, next. If I say something yeah. and it's factually inaccurate, Correct. we yeah. can find that out. But I think saying it's foolishness just, it's, it's an emotive word that, that just makes me upset. Yeah. Uh, you calling me, I feel like you're calling me foolish. And then I'm going to, so what I'm saying, yeah, yeah so. You know, you have, I'm going to say this, you kicked me out of RPMA. So, 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 hold on, hold on, my friends. No, hold on, my friends. Yeah. So, yeah. Can 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 you two do me a favor? Can you two me can you two? Can you do me a favor, Joanne? Joanne. Joanne, can you do me can you do me a favor? Can you do me a favor? Yeah. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, apologies. Uh, what I'm saying is, uh, yes, uh, thank you. What, what I'm saying is, uh, they might, I might say inaccurate things. <laughs> thank you, Joanne. Uh, so yeah, so I might say some inaccurate things, and, and, and we can correct for that. But based on my understanding, based on my understanding, the library was not part of the rezoning. I, I've read the RFP document. Yeah. I co-wrote the RFP document, a part of the Neighborhood Association, and they were asking for the developer to consider rezoning uh, as part of the library. So, so that's, that, that's, my, that's my thinking. But anyway, uh, we have a few more minutes with you, so I just want to hear from those who've not spoken. Uh, any thoughts that come to you, any questions you have, uh, please share with us, and then we'll conclude the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. The secondary plan can be found online if you Google secondary plan region park. It's a long document. I have it on my phone yeah. right here, my friends. And if and you leave your email with us, we'll send you some of these documents as well. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we have a person who wants to speak here. But before right. that, uh, I don't see anybody from the Zoom call. Uh, go ahead. Um, I'm going to make a statement that's probably going to be pretty inflammatory. But, you know, there's a lot of, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, there are a lot of reasons given 
um, for doing this in that, you know, obviously it brings in more money. One of the reasons to bring in more money um, is that there was a large shortfall in um, one, two, and three. You're right. TCAC had a huge shortfall. And what I truly resent is that things like spaces and the library and things like that are kind of held over our heads so that TCHC can balance their books? Because that's essentially what it is. Some of that money is going to be, some of the extra money that they pull in with this rezoning is going to be used to make up their shortfall. Mm -hmm. Um, That has nothing to do with us. If you cut a bad deal somewhere, if you're not good planners with your money, don't lay it at our door. Take the hit. But what was promised to us was promised to us. And if you can't use your money wisely, too darn bad. Yeah, interestingly enough, uh, I want to comment on that one. Uh, So, 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 uh, and I want you guys to think about, think, think along with me on this. So let's say that is true, what Marlene said, that they're seeking to rezone and build higher towers to pay off for the shortfall they did in the other years uh, because it costed, the, it costed them more to pay for phases one and two and three. In order to recuperate that money, they have mm-hmm. to build higher towers. Let's say that's true. And you go to the city and you go to Toronto Community Housing and you go to your counselor and you ask that question. And you ask them, are you building higher towers to pay off for the higher prices for for phases one and two and three? And your counselor says, that's not true. Your city staff tells you that's not true. Toronto Community Housing says that's not true. So sometimes I feel like uh, we, we test each other's credibility. When city officials say, if they stay silent on the matter, I would be suspicious. Mm. But if they give you a direct answer and they say no, that's not the reason, the question is whether we trust our own officials or not. And I think I I leave that to you to decide. But I think that's a good question. And I think we have an opportunity to ask them that. And if but if they tell us an answer and we don't believe in the answer, that 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 goes to uh, a sense of corruption that's far deep uh, than I'm that I'm that I'm comfortable with. Yeah, go ahead. Miguel? I think that many of us watched um, a meeting at the, um, uh, what were they, the, what do you call it, their board meeting for TCHC when Kelly Skeeth, who was one of the uh, major players here for TCHC, admitted to her own board yeah. that they had a major shortfall when she asked for an extra $2 million to uh, hire consultants to push the idea of blue zone. Okay, yeah. so that was an admission, and she had to, um, you know, give a reason why they were in shortfall. It was not a very comfortable meeting. Yeah, and many of us heard that. Yeah, and, and I think that both Marlene and I, you can see, are in disagreement <laughs> on this issue. Uh, uh, the shortfall that they were speaking about at that time was that the question was they had they had budgeted to do community consultations, they had budgeted to do uh, the re- redesign, and their initial budget uh, they didn't have enough money. So that's why they were going back to tr- the corporation and asking for more money in order to do the rezoning. So the shortfall there was very specific to the engagement, not to the whole project. But anyway, uh, uh, these are my opinions, these are Marlene's opinions, and the only way to sift through these opinions is if you look at the documents yourself uh, and join the conversation. Amazing. Uh, Miguel, you want to go next? Yes, Miguel. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. You know, you want to test the credibility of tonight? Where is Chris Moyes? Where is his assistant tonight? He's not here in the room. Where is Tridel? It's not here in the room. I welcome Fatima representing Daniels for 
having the courage to come tonight. Thank you. Folks, I'm looking and talking to the parents in this room. Many of you had children. Yeah. A lot of you. Yeah. And you're not alone. There are thousands of, of parents in this community. They asked me, Miguel, I want you, I want you to help me that my daughter, my son, stay in this community when he turns majority of age. The truth is, the current TCAC policies for internal transfer are next to impossible. You had to rat out your neighborhood, <laughs> your neighbor, accuse him against the police, make a false statement so you can get a place nearby or, or close to Regent Park. And that is not acceptable. What we should be pushing for is for opportunities for rent to own. So that relic, relic transfer policy has to change. Tomorrow, by the way, the Community Tenant Services Committee or the Toronto Housing will be talking about internal transfers. Mm -hmm. So I encourage you to participate to tell, no, that's on, online at the TCAC board. So I can give you the details. So we send it to us, to send it to us. Do, do we need to make the changes? We need to have some changes on the internal pro process or definitely move away with that and have opportunity for residents to own a home in this community. Our children deserve a place in Regent Park. We belong here and that's where we're gonna stay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Miguel. Um, you know, Miguel is a very well-loved and respected member of our community, and I'm very proud to serve with him on the board. Um, I know we're about to end our meeting, but I just want to put it out there that uh, if it's okay with you, Miguel, I just want to ask folks uh, to, if you're a spiritual person, to pray for the, be for the recovery of a very loved member of our community. Uh, Barb's, uh, who's a partner of uh, Miguel, so keep her in your thoughts uh, while you, uh, you know, just before you get to bed today. I've been thinking about it every single day, so Miguel, thank you so much for the courage and love you, you've shown uh, to all of us. Um, so we're about to end our meeting, but before we end our meeting, I want to reinvite all of you to our next meeting in January. And I want you to bring your family. I want you to bring your friends. We're going to have a bigger and be way bigger meeting than this. But we've had a, such a wonderful conversation today, right? And I want us to, it, uh, for us to keep it going. So we're going to make sure that we email uh, our, the, uh, a link to the recording of tonight's meeting so that you can share it with others, so you can get the interest. But before we conclude, I'm going to ask Ishmael to share his final thoughts, some of his final remarks, uh, before we end our meeting. Ishmael? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just want to say thank you for coming. Uh, you've shown great interest in community for coming tonight. Uh, there are many different... <laughs> uh, we, have, we have different ideas, different ways of assessing what's going on. And that's what it was tonight was about, perspectives on rezoning. We may not share one perspective, there's many perspectives, and hopefully, as a community, we'll have this dialogue continue. Uh, please join the conversation, please show up to the update meetings, please ask the difficult questions, and also volunteer to help us find the right answers. Uh, this was conducted from the Neighborhood Association, and as you can see, we have different opinions, different ideas, and we welcome diversity. Uh, I'd like to give it back to my co-chair, Marlene, uh, to have her final thoughts as well. Thank you for coming tonight, and thank you, everybody, who's online for being patient. And I, too, want to thank you for being here. Just remember, RPNA is working for you. If you're not used to being an activist and you care about this neighborhood, it's time to be an activist now. Because things will happen without you if you don't get involved. And we can't, in this neighborhood, allow things to happen without us. Okay? So please watch for what is happening around your community. Get involved, read. If you can't actually get involved, stay aware. Keep yourself informed. See what's happening out there. Thank you guys so much for, for taking this on. Yeah, and I want to thank you, Walid, for the uh, amazing... Uh, <laughs>
leadership and outreach. Uh, yeah, I was in a restaurant and I saw him giving out flyers. So thank you for that, Willie. And we will see you next you. time. Yeah. And please We're take not the food done. with you. Take We're food not with done. You. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. And it's just by accident. How can we come here often? Look, we're trying to get better at it. Communication in this neighborhood has always been difficult. Yes. We'll, we'll but take we're your getting contact information. Better and really better and better. You. Leave your contact information. We will get back to you. Thank you. Good and good night, everyone. Thanks. Bye bye. And, and to you online, thank you so much for coming. Bye bye. Thank you, Marlene. Um, I just, just before we end the night, I just want to acknowledge Carolyn Murphy. Carolyn, thank you so much for joining us. She's with the Cabbage Town Residents Association. So we want to make sure that our, everyone knows that we're in it together, right? We're stronger together. So we've got the support of other neighborhood associations surrounding us, so which is great, great news for all of us. And let's all say goodbye to each other and everyone uh, online, good, uh, good night. Let's say it one more time, this slogan, not for us, without us. Okay, can I say it one more time? Not for us, without not for us, without not for us, us. Without yes. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out all of our social media platforms. For more information, check out our website.